Welcome back to the New World Ultimate Guide. This is episode three, the closed beta. We're logging in here. You're only allowed to make four characters. I recommend making characters on servers that are in your region on US East Coast. So I've made one on Antilla, called Coolio, and I've made another one, this guy here. He's on Atlantis. And his name's Vengada, which is Spanish for Avenger. I've been using that name for years. So, if you remember from episode two, we got kicked off because the server was doing an update. So, what we're going to do now is get back on try to do the quest line and the town board and we're going to collect everything that's relevant from where we are now to where we're going and the reason why I like to express that people should really consider doing this playstyle is because I rarely have to go back and harvest more of something or go back and collect journal pieces because I just do a thorough job of interacting with everything in the area that you're supposed to interact with. So, bow and arrow is cool. I'm not a huge fan. I'm just using it until I get a good musket. I'll make one for myself, but I like using up the arrows that I bought. It's a lot more cost effective than the shells, cartridges. But I've noticed that I miss more because it's not instant like the guns are. And then another thing I've noticed too, like in episode two, even if you're really good at kiting, You'll still never be so good that I see the bow being really that big of an advantage versus like the gun. Even a sword. I mean, I kill them much faster with a sword with less effort, less skill. So I'm hoping that as I get to a higher level, I get better skills and items that it'll pay off using the ranged abilities. Of course, what's really cool about the muskets, the rifles, I guess they are, they have cartridges. But um, what's really cool about the firearms is that you can get instant damage from over 100 yards away. And in PvP, that's got to be really useful. Like, if you're a good shot, and you know you have good accuracy, good timing with when you're firing. You can get good headshot accuracy. Um, you get those bonuses. Lots of damage. If that translates over to PvP, well, that could be really powerful. I haven't been on the defensive role of like a, like a war, I guess. Um, but I imagine that if you were standing in a defensive spot, like on a tower or a wall or something, bunker, and you had enough ammo to just keep shooting for as long as you needed to, you'd probably get a lot of consistent damage and kills because you could be selective with who you're firing at when, because you can technically fire anybody with some infection. So, what I mean by that is, if somebody's low in HP, you can focus fire on them, get that kill, move on to the next one. Where somebody else has to like run around, be right next to them, and physically attack them with a sword or whatever, you can just go straight in and fire without even having to move as long as you have clear line of sight.
I do want to mention that the graphics are really great, but also the physics in the game is very realistic in a good way. I mean, of course, there's like magic and stuff. That's not what I mean. I mean, like what it feels like to run around, jump over things, how the combat, how fluid it feels. So as you can see, we've ran into a lot of things that we can't harvest because our skill level isn't high enough yet. And that's why I've been leveling up my harvesting levels um, in between quests as we're traveling places. That's the best way to do it. Eventually I'll be able to pick up these better, higher level items and craft them into higher level items. Don't forget to check your HP um, probably ever after every fight. I forget to do that sometimes. And because uh, if you don't have to eat after every fight, but you should keep your health pretty high because you never know what's going to happen. So I just hit level 10. And that unlocks the first bag slot. Now, if you recall, back in town, there's an innkeeper that gives you a quest. If you continue that quest line, which we're going to do, one of his rewards is a bag. And what that bag does is it increases your encumberment weight from 200 pounds to 225 pounds and what that means simply is that you can carry 25 more pounds of stuff before you're encumbered but encumberment's not the only penalty for having a lot of weight because you might not be encumbered but you have you're heavy so you can't roll see how my guy's just jumping kind of he's not he's not doing like barrel rolls and stuff like when you have no weight and that's because my weight's a little over half. You want to stay below halfway if you can help it. And so why that bag is really useful is you get to carry more weight also before you start having effects of having too much weight because your overall ability to carry more weight is higher. So it's going to be good to get more bags just like any other game. World of Warcraft, you want to have, you know, your Butte Nether Weave bags or whatever is the best bag at the time, the highest value, I guess. You might get like a 14 slot bag of WoW that's 10 times cheaper than an 18 slot bag. Um, in this game, the only bag I've seen is this quest reward so far, but I know that you can craft them, and I got to that crafting level. Ooh, I just found three void metal. Nice. So that's a rare crafting metal. The farms are cool. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's like a vegetable and what's a dirt pile. Um, luckily, the programmers had this insight. And when you go to a new area and you're not really sure what node you're collecting at, like what it looks like, you might have a name that you don't know what that thing looks like. So like how do you find it when you get there? So what they have done is they highlight it with like a blue like UFO tractor beam almost. Looks like this blue laser beam that like flashes and goes up into the sky from the ground. And it's kind of like a beacon. So you can see where the collectible node is. And that was really useful for a couple of quests here at this farm. One of them's later on. And you'll see that if you keep watching. But the dirt piles were hard to see because there's so much dirt at the farm and then there's a bunch of other stuff on the dirt, like plants and things. So it, it flashed for you and it was a lot easier to find it that way.
I like to go in every building. Um, you can usually find stockpiles or caches, and you get a lot of good items and also some crafting materials that are harder to find. So it's always good to do that. And then if you're doing quests, sometimes they'll ask you to find a certain amount of quest items that are inside, like caches or stockpiles. And so you've got to go to every building in the town anyways, just to get all of the items to finish the quest. Because once you've collected from a catch, it's like, several hours before you can come back and collect it again. So you could find one in that house that we were just in. But if I go back there in the next hour, it's not going to let me collect anything. I got to go get the quest items from the other bins around the town that I have found. So collecting some carrots here. Take this person's turkey. But there's, see this guy's running away and he's kiting them. So I'm gonna run over here. And it looks like there's some cash here. Yep, supply cash. So it's got the precision tools, that's a quest item. And I'm gonna keep looking for some more precision tools. I only need a couple more. And I'm essentially looking in the outskirts of this town because I've already got the other catches and the precision tools that are in them. This one's a provisions crate. I still got some precision tools just so that you're aware. But provisions are for cooking. So you can see I got some milk and some other cooking ingredients there. If you're wanting to do range like we are now with the bow and arrow it's good to use walls and barriers uh, if you do it right you can get a couple shots off before they run around the fence and attack you and you can just strafe jump to the other side of the wall and then they have to run all the way back so you could jump back and forth over this wall and they can never hit you this is just infinitely chasing you around this wall. Like, you would never get this. So it's another way that you can kite. Like, watch this guy. He's got to run all the way around this wall. And I jump over this wall. So another thing that's cool about this game is that I'm not dedicated to using specifically one weapon set. It's not like I've rolled a hunter, but I don't really like using bows and guns and I have to make a new character if I want to do healing. I can just go get a life staff and start getting my weapon skill getting the healing abilities and upgrading the healing abilities and getting materials or equipment that has bonuses that are good for healing and using your your skill level attributes on healing attributes all of that included I can have a second set of gear like I could have DPS gear I could have a tank set of gear, I could have a healer gear, or some sort of hybrid or a mage, or whatever you want to be. And I can just respec my talents, or just ultimately kind of max everything out. I guess when you're level 60, you stop getting the quest attributes, and you get about 2 to 3 per level. So 60 levels in, you're looking at like 180, 150 points. So if you spent all of them on one thing, you might be able to max that one thing out. But it's probably going to be better to be some sort of balanced combination. Constitution is always a good one for everybody. I think that having a lot of health is always a good thing, no matter what you are. 
Uh, maybe not if you're a healer, because you can get more health by healing. But a lot of the heals, you're not able to heal yourself. At least as far as I've played. But what I'm excited about this game is, in a lot of other games, like, you have mains and alts. I see that kind of ending, unless cosmetically you want to be a different looking person or gender, or if you wanted to play on a different faction and to try out, you know, that version of the game. But I don't see any re-rolling happening unless there's an expansion pack and they add some sort of new thing that, you know, new race or something that makes you want to, you know, re-roll a new character. And that's good because you're not typing in slash play and seeing, you know, a thousand days play time on the web and thinking, where did my life go? I'm not even that good because I made a couple different 60s or whatever. Versus in this game, you just play your one character and you put your time and effort into it. You're eventually going to get to the end of the game where you maxed out. So if you just say um, committed to it and you don't even have to play a lot. Also, for people that can't play a lot, um, or they can't play a lot now, but they want to play more later, like people, the, the weekend warriors, working all week, taking care of your family and your house and stuff, and then it's like weekend, and you want to unwind and play your game for a couple of hours. Don't forget to log out inside a village or in because there is rest in this game, just like in EverQuest and WoW. So the people that can't play as much don't get totally dusted because they get that XP bonus when they're not able to play and they're locked out in a village or an inn. So you want to make a habit of logging out in town. Until you're level 60, and then you can do whatever you want, I guess. But it's always going to be an advantage to start in town. So this is um, one of these quick travel stones. Fast travel. And that's cool if you've got Azoth to fast travel. Or you can recall to your inn once an hour. Kind of like a hearthstone. So I'm going to do that. You can recall to inn from anywhere by any map. Agreed. So, you can only fast travel to places that you've physically been already. So, I didn't know that at first. I didn't realize how important fast travel on Azoth was going to be. Because there's no mounts. As you can see, Iron Ingot here is a quest item, so I'm just making as many as I can. I didn't know that fast travel was going to be such a big deal. Uh, now that I know that, I'll probably try to visit as many towns as I can right away when the game launches, and I'm going to do the same. You don't want to find like a dead town, but in the beginning, it could be really helpful to go to a farther away village and try to, you know, get your faction to control that village and buy a house there, what's cheap, and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's two different ways you could go. I'm just going to sit here and cook all of the primaries that I've got. So, there's two different ways you could go. You could go with the high population town. It's going to get the higher tier stuff. Like, we're cooking on a tier 4 kitchen right now. And that gets leveled up like that by people in the town doing the town board quests. And that gives us benefits like more XP or you cook faster or you don't burn as much or whatever. I haven't burnt anything for the record. So that's cool that there's not like a wasting mechanism. You actually get what you collected. Because there's a lot of other games like 
or escape, for example, if you're not like 99 cooking with your cooking gloves, you're gonna burn a bunch of your sharks or lobsters or whatever. And you, that's losing money. So it's cool to get out what you put in as far as materials and crafting. Here we're making some weak mana potions. It's also for a quest. I just wanted to try out every mechanism of this game, see what I liked, see what was the most important. Um, you know, if there's certain skills or, or trades that I like more, that I make more, or that are more useful. Here I just made a green iron longsword, so I'm making some armored things just to check it out. You can put Azoth on his stuff. I just added soft wood. Um, and that added dexterity and focus. And enfeebly poisoning shots. So when you add a special item, like your soft tree sap, that imbues the item with specific stats. And when you're picking the special item, you're adding, like the soft wood tree sap. The, the different items, it shows you what the bonus is going to be before you do it. It's unlike some other games where you gotta like, you gotta like make it to find out what the bonuses are going to be. Additionally, the higher your skill is in this game, the better the material or item that you make with the same materials. So. If you have a low skill, low level skill crafting and you make a bow, and you come back later with a higher level crafting, like level 10. I should hope I'll see you around the forge often then. You're welcome to use it any time. Skills like yours shouldn't go to waste. Oh, uh, before you go wandering off, you should meet survivalist Carcity. Uh, while dying isn't necessarily permanent on Eternum, it can be quite painful. She can offer insight on avoiding it. Oh, the kind that keep you from freezing. Or starving to death out in the wilds. Eh, being alive and frozen solid is particularly unpleasant. Talk to Carcity. It's rare that she's actually here. Uh-oh. Here comes another tourist. I'm just about over everyone in this settlement expecting me to keep them safe. It's not my job. Look, I hate to be harsh, but survival is not always a given here. Whether outside or in, people do die, or worse. Become corrupted, lost. None of us get a free pass. With all this talk about corruption spreading, it sounds to me like being safe is a thing of the past. I mean, what do you do if this settlement gets overrun by corrupted? And then you'll really be in the thick of it. I mean, maybe you got what it takes. Maybe not. Fine, let's find out. How about you head out there, make camp, and do some hunting at some of the local wolf dens? So, like I was saying, if you come back at level 10 and make that same bug, it's going to be green, and it's going to have bonuses to it, it's going to do more damage, might have more durability before it breaks. So ultimately, you're going to want to get your crafting skills all the way up by the time you're at the end of the game, because there's going to be a lot of items that you're going to want to make. So when you go to the town project board, you can complete, turn in all of the quests, and that's going to level up your territory standing. So here, I'm going to lower my crafting fee again. So it doesn't cost me as much to level up my crafting. And then I also leveled up to level 11. So I used dexterity for more damage. And I'm going to get a rifle soon. So I'm taking more quests here. And I'm turning in the ones that I already have completed. That one was for common mana potions, weak mana potion. So I already had some. I picked it up, turned it in, and you can see a new mission will be available soon. So there is a certain pace that you're allowed to complete these missions at. 
there were a lot of streamers and stuff at first, and like following people wanted to play with them, and they would give them all their items and money so that they could buy the items on the craft board so they could turn in the quests and essentially get level 60 super fast because like a hundred people are giving all their money to one guy so he can buy the items he needs to finish the quests and that's one way to do it but I think they're going to patch that somehow so uh, they got two months to fix stuff they're probably going to fix that I do like how natural the environment feels and how if you run through the woods and you just find some sort of mushroom or that sort of special rock and uh, you know these animals in their environment and it, it all feels very natural and real it doesn't really feel like I'm playing a game as much as some other games because it's so realistic it almost feels natural and it makes me think about what VR and augmented reality is going to be like in the near future because it's going to be getting hard to tell the difference between what's a game and what's real life you know because it's so realistic so here we're getting some bellows which is a quest item. A bellow is that air puff thing that you see um, puffing air into a fire or a um, furnace to get the temperature up to inject the oxygen. It's so you can blacksmith basically. So we're running around the cannon tomb here and we're trying to find any of these little cash supply boxes so that we can find more bellows for our quests explore and find. So we need one more bellows. We've leveled up our bow skill again and I'm just increasing the damage of that hop attack. And we got our final bellows so we're done with finding bellows at the cannon tomb. And we're acquiring some stone so that we can turn into stone block when we get back. Hemp's always good to stop and collect. Um, especially if you intend on playing any sort of class that's using magic or healing, you're gonna want the hemp so that you can get good at tailoring and make the cloth armor that you need but when you're a higher level and you get the rare materials I suspect that's going to be some of the best gear that you can get for a while at first because it's just going to be hard to find that stuff I'm assuming that there's going to be basically like a like a primary settlement. So Wind's Word in, on this server was the primary settlement. And the reason I say that is because I went to all the other settlements and they had better rates and stuff, but there's like, they're like ghost towns. There's like nobody there. There's a handful of people, but Wind's Word was like fully loaded, get upgraded like nonstop constantly. And I go to the other cities later on in my gameplay and the cities are much less developed. So the bigger the stone visually or the boulder, the more rocks or stone that gives you. And same goes with trees and hemp and all the other nodes. So size does matter in the new world. That's what she said. I wish I had more time, honestly, to get the crafting and harvesting levels up, and even the combat. But I understand why they cut it short. Some people, they were like Cartman and South Park playing WoW, having people like bring them hot pockets or something, because I don't know how they got to level 60. 
in like a week. They must have not slept or took shifts with like a friend or a roommate or something. Because this game is really fun, but it's very large and it's very in depth. I know a lot of people are comparing it to Dark Souls, which I haven't played, and Skyrim, which I also haven't played. And I understand each game, but I think that because this game's so new, it's eventually just going to dwarf everything else. Um, Amazon's put a lot of money and time into this, and they have pretty much endless money. And video gaming is like a big industry, so I could see them. I mean, they're into space travel and stuff now. So having a big frontline video game or MMO, or if you could be a WoW killer, the WoW killer, um, that's there's a lot of money there. And speaking of WoW, you know, Blizzard's doing a number on themselves right now. So um, definitely opportunity zone for Amazon Gaming to really knock this out of the park and take customers from, you know, Final Fantasy, Dark Souls, WoW, and Skyrim, all of them. The other cool thing about this game is that once it officially launches, there's going to be that whole, wow, nobody's ever done this before. There's no guide. Uh, this is different than the guides that I watched from beta, you know, because they're going to change things. So we might spawn in a different area and like none of these quests are the same. They might be like similar. Maybe they are the same, but they're in a different place. So like, it's not the same. And there's that whole variety. And then when you do go to other towns, there are going to be those boards there. And you can take those quests from those town boards too. And until everything's fully upgraded, um, you basically can't. You can just keep doing quests. So I don't, I'm not sure what the max faction level is. I didn't reach it. I imagine you'd have to do countless board quests and other things. But I think that once you get that high level, it's probably really rewarding. I understand that there's like different level, um, like politician town status levels. Like you can be like the governor or mayor or whatever. And I guess that allows you to decide like how much of the taxes are being paid towards building what, upgrading and maintaining what, how much taxes you're going to charge, like all sorts of stuff, I guess. So this really is like a digital world. And I'm excited about that. I've always thought over the years that if I, you know, just recorded my gameplay and did the commentary over it, uh, maybe I could get monetized, pay to play video games. That would be really cool. I've always wanted that. I mean, that's a dream, right? So I'm going for it with New World. Um, like I had mentioned before, this is a nice opportunity. I've not seen any MMO that has this kind of like impact and it's just such a good game already that I know that it's going to be like a good investment of my time long term because the game's not just going to fail and disappear. I've already played it enough and it sucks you in. And I didn't even get to end game and there's like PvP I didn't even try yet and there's apparently like a battlegrounds arena sort of mode and then there's declaring war and taking over villages and it's going to be really cool so I'm just going to try to best position myself for launch and they just pushed it back to September 
but I'm okay with that. Um, I still have a lot of editing to do. I'd like to get everybody some more, um, I guess you could call it organized reviews. I'm going to start doing, you know, life skill reviews, like how to wood work and how to stone craft and stuff like that. So as you can see here, I'm encumbered and I'm trying to decide what to salvage or drop to lose weight. And now I'm not encumbered anymore. So I can carry 3.4 more pounds until I'm encumbered again. Always picking up the hemp. I love hemp, I think it's great. It's legal now. I've got a hemp farm. Astrap Buds is a hemp company. It's all legal. And uh, it's very exciting. CBD is it's an exciting time to be alive to just be able to get, you know, CBD at the gas station or whatever. It's, I like having it, the option because I don't like traditional, you know, painkillers, anti-inflammatory. Like, I'm not a big pharmaceutical drug fan unless I have to. So it's always nice to have that natural option. Yeah, so being encumbered sucks. Now, at this point in the game, I start realizing I need bags, and also I need to put away stuff that I'm not using into storage shed. Because you don't want to be getting encumbered constantly. It's not fun to walk around slow. It's not fun to watch it. So I'm going to scoot in here and deposit stuff at the shed and turn in the quests. And uh, there's a shed right here. But got to pick up all the notes. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to figure out later. After launch, I'm assuming that you could collect them all. So I guess I didn't realize that was a shed. So I'm going to keep going into town, or I didn't want to deposit any sort of quest items. And I wasn't entirely sure how everything worked yet, which is why I'm making this guide. So, if you're not sure what items are being used for quests, they always have, like, that yellow square over them. You can hear these guys talking. So, in New World, you got your mic enabled. And you're talking. Anyone within, like, earshot of you in the game can hear you talk. Sometimes it's cool, most of the time it's not. But I hope that it becomes like better. They sound like chipmunks because I sped it up. So we're just making stuff. Like so many Rick Rolls me. Or am I playing the Rick Rolls song? And uh, YouTube made me mute it. Because <laughs> it's like an old track. So I'm making some treated wood fishing poles. And I want to try fishing. I like fishing personally, like in person, and I think fishing in games is pretty cool. I made a lot of money fishing in RuneScape, and made a lot of money fishing in WoW. And I know what you're thinking, you can't make any money fishing in WoW. 
You make money fishing in WoW when you're max level fishing. And then you're cooking the raid bonus foods. And that's what provisioning is basically it is in this game. So the point is, is that eventually you're going to be high level, you go out like hunt the elephant or something. I don't know. And then cook that and get the bonuses and you use that while you're like doing a dungeon or something. So I'm trying to find there's my bag, but I can't make it because I need iron. Ruin of holding. So I don't have one of those either. And that's why I would have made my bag but I end up finding out no, in the next episode, so I think, to 80 to that it's literally you could do that quest line to get that back. Alright, so I'm equipping the fishing pole. I've seen other people fishing here, like right now. I'm going to put the uh, wood louse bait and get those from Collecting bushes. Oh, too early. So you throw your fishing rod out there. You can hold it down to throw it farther. Once you get that sound and visual, and you see the fish hit the line, then you hold down the left mouse and it starts to reel it in. But as you can see with the animation inside the reel wheel, that you don't want it to go red or orange and snap because then you lose your fish and the bait that you used for it. So you'll have to let go and let the tension come off the line a little bit. I keep going early here, but eventually I get the hang of it. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Give me a like. Subscribe. Check out our next episode. And I'll go over in more detail how to be a good fisherman and we'll move on with the quest line. Peace.